What's going on guys? Mike Corbishley here with Ben Cho and Cash and um, we're talking new rods, new forward facing oh, yeah. sonar rods. Yeah. Uh, what sizes we got? What, yeah. What's the differences? Absolutely, yeah. So we got a 7.4 medium, 7.5 yeah. medium light. Super pumped about these rods, but even the technique specifically, mm -hmm. continually evolving. We're learning new stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have done a million times more forward-facing sonar than I have. I want you to share some tips, because um, a lot of guys in the industry and a lot of guys that are starting to utilize this technology, um, yep. this is our first dipping their toe into it. What are a few things that, that they can take away that will help them maybe get a leg up, maybe see more fish, catch more fish, um, just kind of optimize that? Because um, yep. let's face it, it's not necessarily a cheap technology, so no, 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 um, no. as much as we can catch more fish on it and use it like it's supposed to, um, yeah, tell me a little bit about what we need to know. Well, so that's the thing, right? So like my day job, like I sell electronics. I work for Navico for Lawrence Electronics. Yeah. And uh, man, I try to be an expert in that field. And uh, so between balancing that and NPFL, uh, I feel like I have a really good grasp on like, you know, new techniques and stuff like that that you can use with our transducers. And uh, you know, we, we have people that ask questions all the time, like, hey, how do I get better clarity with this or that or better range? And so the only way I can, honestly, we can learn some of that stuff from our product experts, but when I'm doing it out there myself, I yep. learn a lot more. So um, that's kind of what the deal is. Like these rods, so we've got two rods, like you said, a seven to four and a seven to five, new lightweight guides on them. Yep. But here's the thing, man, like I like that long rod because or the, the reason we got two sizes, so we got the medium light fast. So this is like your lighter jig heads, right? It's, it's kind of more so for that Demiki rigging, uh, mid strolling type stuff. Uh, it's really what it's all about. Like that's that's kind of what's dominating the sport. And there's no telling how long it'll last, but man, it seems like it's it's technique that is here to stay enough to where we na made rods up over it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So you guys are winning tournaments. All the time. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. So the forward facing sonar rod. So if you're seeing fish 8, 70, 80, 100 feet out, which that's a long way. That's, that's a right. Long cast. Yeah. That's right, man. I mean, yeah, you can use the the generic seven foot spinning rod that I only owned one of a few years ago. Sure, yeah. It's kind of changing, but seven foot five. So it's the same concept as like like let's say you're throwing a deep crankbait, and we go to a longer rod. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's And that's the same kind of concept. So you get that longer cast, you got a little bit more leverage on that fish. Yep. Man, I'm not, if I'm throwing a big crankbait, I'm not going to throw it on a seven foot medium rod when I'm trying to hit them on a ledge in 20 foot of water. Sure. So that's the same kind of concept with this rod. And that's not to say that there's, you know, other op options where you could, you know, throw a smaller one. But where I think the difference is like, so like seven foot four, uh, medium, I'm going to throw a little bit heavier jig heads on. Okay, so, so we're talking what, like 3 eighths? Yep, yep. Quarter stuff out. in that range, yeah, like 3 eighths, uh, you know, 5 16, stuff like that in that range, maybe a little bit heavier. You probably could even, you could go to a half. Uh, I typically don't ever go to a half, okay. to be completely honest. Uh, but, but we've got this belt to where it can even handle that. For sure. Like if we're 80 yeah. foot out and they're in 60 foot of water, no nobody wants to throw it out there and sit and wait for a 16th ounce. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're just, <laughs> yeah. might as well grab a sandwich, right? So, That's exactly yeah. right. And, and you know, and we're talking kind of Demiki rig stuff, but like, let's be real, like the, like a Kai Tech, like a 3.8 Kai Tech or, or, or a 2.8 even. Um, like a 3.8 Kai Tech would probably go more so on that rod. Okay. But like, you know, the smaller ball head swim baits. Right. Like, man, that stuff still plays. They, they bite it. 100%. You know what I mean? So I'll go to uh, uh, now on the, on the medium light, on the 7 foot 5 medium light. That's when I go to like a 16th, 8th, 3 16th, quarter. Okay. It's that type of stuff. And you know, and the key with this rod, like you've got that extra length, but on the end of it, you see how much taper you have. Yeah. And so if you're shaking like this while you're, uh, you know, mid strolling, hover rigging, whatever you want to call it, uh, if you're shaking like this and that fish goes to bite it, it, the rod will load up before they even know they're hooked. Sure. Versus on that, that shorter, stiffer rod, yep. the problem you run into is I think as soon as they know that you've got, you know, that they're, they've, they've got tension pretty quick on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not a ton of give. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So I think that's really where it comes into play, and then you can set the hook, and you got full control of them. Awesome. Yeah, so you like to err on the longer side. Yep. Um, and then, particularly in those weight ranges, you know, like we said, depending on, you know, where they're suspending at, what that depth is, and, and how yeah. far out we're having to cast, so. Yeah. Um, awesome. And then, you know, I can get the rod down, I can get the cast down. For me, it's always... Can I see my lure? You know, when I'm looking at the graph, where am I? Where are the fish? Is that a fish? Is that a rock? <laughs> what am I looking at? Um, so, as we just continue to dial in the electronics, yeah. um, would you say the biggest thing is to just get out and just 
do yeah. it. I mean, you just yeah. gotta you have so, to do it. Like, it's so cliche to say, but if there's no substitute for time on the water. Yeah. There's no difference. I mean, like, man, a lot of times the people think there's some sort of big sneak secret behind this, or I've even heard the word like cheating as far as forward facing sonar goes. Let me tell you. In the middle of March, I want to be flipping bushes and throwing a Who doesn't? around yeah. grass yeah. and doing the fun stuff. But if I'm going to fish a tournament and I'm not catching the size I need to win, yeah. I'm going to go explore opportunities and that's where the forward facing sonar stuff comes in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can kind of put the troll motor on high, get out there and go search for them. And the, really the only way to learn that, so like if you were to go travel to a tournament, like man, you got three days of practice to break down that body of water. Yep. But if I'm learning around the house, like that's, that's you know, I'm gonna go down, go out, put the trolling motor down, and just go, yeah. and just look, look at your, look at your forward-facing sonar, look at your active target, and um, man, throughout the day, you'll you'll start to learn. You know, you, you can start with super small baits, like uh, figure out what a crappie looks like, figure out what a catfish looks like, figure out what white bass look like, yeah. and then you'll kind of figure out that lo- where the largemouth fit in, and. Uh, and that's, and that's just how you learn, man, yeah. you know, looking at stumps. It doesn't have to be specific to species of fish. Stumps, brush piles, rock piles, like timber. You know so would I mean? you recommend guys take forward-facing sonar technology to some of the waypoints they already know where their stuff at that's, just to yeah. see what it looks like? Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Okay. So that's the deal, right? Like a place that you've caught fish for yeah. forever. Like pull up, look at it, be like, oh, okay, that's what that looks like. Yeah. Understand what that look. It's a tool, man. A forward-facing sonar is a tool. Yeah. Look at it on your forward-facing sonar. Look at it on your side scan, your down scan. Learn your electronics, yep. and then you can kind of duplicate that across the board. And that's where you know, like active target. If you're searching, you find them on your side scan, whatever. And then that's where you kind of dial it in with your forward-facing sonar, your active target, um, and use a rod like this to catch them. Cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. As much as we would love for that active target transducer and the forward-facing sonar rod to put the fish in the boat. <laughs> we got to do some homework. Got to get on down. the water. You got to make it happen. So, oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, that's what I'll be doing. I'll go to yeah. some waypoints I know where there's rock at and just see what it looks like, I guess. Yeah, that's it. Man. Awesome. Find the fish and catch them. Find the bait, find the fish. <laughs> it's that easy. Toss it in there, pull them in. That's cool, man. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Well, well, I got some homework to do. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you.